to have the experience of the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experiences. It's so much bigger than your just knowledge of love. You know that. Some people just know stuff, but they don't have no experience of it. Remember I said to you a while back that some people know more than what they understand? Because you, you, you can know a thing, but without experience, you don't really know it. You don't really know it. You know a lot with your well-educated self. You're just dumb where the experience is concerned. With your intelligent, dumb self. No more than what you understand. He says this, this, the, the, the experience of love it, it goes so, it's so much better than mere knowledge. It's not God's will that you just have mere knowledge. Are you serious? You really think that? You really think he just wants you to come to church so you can just know some stuff? I don't remember world changes. I know some stuff. That's not the will of God. So you can just come and know some stuff? Everybody in here ought to have an experience of what he knows. Look, I'm telling me about the Greek and Hebrew of love. I don't want him about no Greek and Hebrew of love. I got a concordance, a computer. I can find that out on my own. But what have you experienced as a result of being rooted and grounded in this love? Tell me what you know. I don't want to sit down and talk to no Christian that's just got a big head full of knowledge and don't know nothing. He make good conversation. His life just ain't worth nothing. He's got, he's got mere knowledge. I'm sure you met people like that. They know a lot. They can't live none of it. They know the Greek, Hebrew, Latin word, and the tongue talk for it. <laughs> I'm about one of y'all that. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm fed up. I can't, I can't deal with no phony Christians. I can't deal with all that mess. I can't just, just go away. I don't want to deal with all that. People wanting to get in relationship with you so they can take advantage of you. Covenant relationship was born out of love. The covenant was born out of love, wasn't it? Covenant was born. Covenant was born out of God's love for us. Abraham didn't strike up the covenant. God did. Why? Because of his love, his 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 hostage, his his tender, loving kindness and hot pursuit of us, trying to run us over with his blessing, his his desire for us to know all things. So he says, You don't believe me, so I'm gonna cut a covenant with you. And this covenant between me and you was designed, Abraham, so I can finally give you the advantage that you don't even believe I'll give it. So I'll give you a covenant so I can give you the advantage. Covenant relationship is never designed for you to take advantage of. It was always designed for you to give the advantage. When you got married, the marriage covenant was not designed so that you can take advantage of your spouse, but so you can spend the rest of your life trying to figure out how to give one another the advantage. And if you are busy giving one another the advantage and not taking advantage of one another, divorce can never be what it is. You understand what I'm saying? I gotta figure out ways of how to give this woman the advantage. I gotta give her the advantage. That's my job. And got nothing to be talking about, oh, she taking advantage of me. That ain't none of my business. My business is how I can give her the advantage. Her business is how she can give me the advantage. We are busy trying to give one another the advantage. Ain't nobody gonna be talking about getting no divorce. If you got a problem, develop an unconditional love, and unconditional love will swallow the problem and spit it out, and you can continue to stay married. But, but we, we got this, this pimp society in the church where everybody trying to figure out how to take advantage of the situation. And you're never bringing nothing to the table. You're just taking from the table. And after a while, ain't nothing going to be left on the table because you mishandled and perverted the purpose for covenant relationship. If it's not born out of love, I wouldn't have nothing to do with it. I wouldn't marry no man that's not willing to love you unconditionally. I wouldn't hook up with somebody that seems to always be taking advantage of you. You need somebody that's trying to give you the advantage. Amen. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. I'm going to buy this tape myself. 
I know, look. And this is what I want to get to today. <laughs> Without experience, that you may be filled through all of your being unto the fullness of God, the fullness of God, the fullness of God, the fullness of God. I want you to be rooted and grounded in this love so that you can be filled with the fullness of God. I want you to be rooted and grounded in this love so you can be filled with the fullness of God. The fullness of God. What's that? Fullness of God is this. It is a state of being complete. What does that mean? It is a state of peace. It is a state of being complete, complete where nothing is missing, nothing is needed, and nothing is wanted. Nothing needed, nothing missing, nothing wanted. Somebody shout fullness. fullness. Nothing needed, nothing missing, nothing wanted. Be rooted and grounded in love so you can know the power, so you can be filled with all the fullness of God. So out of this root of love comes fullness. Out of the root of love is the experience of living a life with nothing missing, nothing needed, and nothing wanted. Can you think about it? Now, don't you be like one of them Christians talking about, ooh, I can't see myself like that. You know, you show them a big house, they say, oh, I can't see myself living in that. Well, get out of the way. I can. <laughs> I can see myself with nothing missing. I can see myself with nothing wanted. I can see myself with nothing needed. In fact, I'm going to start doing it right now. I see myself. I don't miss nothing. I don't want nothing. Imagine Christmas time. People come up to you and say, what you want for Christmas? You start going through, well, I don't need nothing. And, well, I don't want nothing. And, well, I don't miss nothing. You ought to shout, I'm in the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Somebody says, well, well, how do you get there? You get there by being rooted and grounded in love. This is going to be the experience of being rooted and grounded in love. Being filled with the fullness of God. Nothing missing. Nothing needed. Nothing wanted. I'm complete. Now, you don't wait until you get to the place where nothing's needed. Nothing's wanted, nothing's missing. How I many of you know we faith people? And faith people call the thing that be not as though it were. How many of you been getting up every day saying, I live in the fullness of God? Nothing wanted, nothing needed, nothing, nothing missed. You got to start saying that. You got to start calling that. You got to start believing that. You got to start receiving that. That it is possible for me to live a life with nothing missing, nothing needed, and nothing wanted. As long as you go around talking, I don't know if I believe that. You can forget it then. Because in the kingdom, you got to believe it. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe being rooted in this love is going to bring me to the place of the fullness of God where nothing's needed and nothing's wanted and nothing's missing. I'm, I'm rooted and grounded in the love of God where nothing's needed and nothing's wanted and nothing's missing. All right. Look at this next one. Hold on to your horses, man. I got a flood of revelation on this thing that just curled my hair and then did it tight. <laughs> that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. And that you may have the richest measure of the divine presence. The God that's rooted and grounded in love is also going to be the God that's rich in the measure of God's divine presence. All right, follow me closely on this one. Most Christians define prosperity as material, wealth, and blessing. 
I challenge that this morning. I have a right to challenge that because I am qualified to challenge that. Ain't nobody been beat up around the world like me and Taffy over trying to get this over to folks. But here it is, and I'm going to prove it. Prosperity is the measure of God's divine presence that is on a man's life. Yes. Prosperity is not the measure of material things that will eventually come but that is not what prosperity is prosperity is the measure of divine presence one of the ways the enemy contains believers is by limiting us in the area of prosperity but in the series live love overflow I explained that we also limit God and ourselves when we lack faith in his word. Now, if you can relate to this, I encourage you to call and order this series right away, or you may purchase it at our website. You'll discover how to develop faith in God's word and take the limits off your life forever. And if you're fed up with average living and want to get real results in life, this month's offer is just for you. It's a dynamic package entitled The Total Victory Gift Collection. It includes my book, Winning in Troubled Times, as well as the teaching series. Now, there's also a powerful music CD, a mini scripture book, and Destiny Journal, and more. This all-inclusive package is available for a love gift of $150 U.S. dollars or more. And this month only, you may also purchase the single message, Tools for Winning, and my book, Winning in Troubled Times for your love gift of any amount. So visit our website and order this must-have package today. When you partner with us, you empower us to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. As a result, millions of lives are impacted and changed for the better. To partner with us, all you have to do is call the number on your screen, write to the address shown, or log on to our website. We thank you for your continued support and may God richly bless your life.